Govardhan Eco Village is about two and a half hours northeast of Mumbai in a very beautiful rural village area of Maharashtra. There's a very holy place in India which is considered most sacred to devotees of Krishna. It's called Brindavan. And in that Brindavan is a mountain named Govardhan, which represents environmental, ecological harmony with spiritual principles. This place is very special. Certainly, it's unique in India and perhaps unique in the whole world. It's like a retreat center. It's like a spa. It's like an ashram. It's a place that's designed as an experiment to merge environmentalism, animal rights, and bhakti, spirituality, together. And it's working. Come dance with me. The amenities here are of a whole nother caliber. People, when they think of the words India and ashram, they think of harsh and rough living. From the Ayurvedic clinic, which not only gives treatments, but also has an Ayurvedic doctor who helps prescribe something that is specific for your dosha. The atmosphere that is created by the founder, Radhanath Swami Maharaj, and the atmosphere that is created by the devotees who work here is palpable. You can feel it in the air. Originally, I was from Chicago. When I was 19 years old in 1970, I wanted to try to broaden my outlook of life. So I went on a journey. Ultimately, I hitchhiked from London to the Himalayas in India. And as I was traveling, I came to realize that the real social and environmental problems of the world are due to a spiritual crisis. A crisis in what we consider is actually meaningful and fulfilling in our lives. Varna Swami is a passionate person. The best passion is compassion, and he has an ample amount of that, and that type of passion is contagious. Becoming here and helping to you know, do the, doing the seva, the service, um, helping with the cows, helping with uh, to weave mats, helping with make pottery. Uh, it's it's all it's actually fun. It's very simple lifestyle, and I think a lot of the, us crave that on different levels. And it's sort of programmed into our culture that you you look for recognition. You need it. For me, being here, I see it's far more powerful to be humble. It was easy to complain about the tiny inconveniences that come with a, you know, a New York City apartment. Oh, it's not big enough. Oh, the water pressure isn't great enough. When you live in a house that you see built from the ground up, every step along the way, it's very special. When people come here, trying to inspire an educational, experiential alternative of a fulfilling, meaningful, sustainable, healthy life. Apart from these uh, jasmine flowers which you're seeing, he grows a lot of his lady fingers, okra. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we network with all these farmers so that we purchase them in our kitchen and use them. Can we get this to the kitchen? We can give them yeah. to the, yeah. And the inspiration of this project, Srila Prabhupada, he called this transformation simple living and high thinking. We get 3,000 millimeters of rain annually. So the rainwater hits against those mountains, the Sahyadri mountain ranges, and flows down and collects here. And it is sufficient water for us to irrigate our fields for up to six to seven months every year. The majority of India's population, which is 1.2 billion, lives in the villages. So one of the very important requirements to develop a village is how can water be conserved. The process begins here. As you can see, the raw sewage is falling and there are some screens. The first chamber is called screen chamber, where we are trying to separate floating solids. This is the raw water where we began. And this is the treated water. <laughs> Thank you.
The uniqueness of this place comes from the fact that every waste is becoming a precious resource. That cow dung becomes a fertilizer for earth. He needs fire or energy for cooking his food and therefore all of the cow dung we utilize for biogas plant. We need to make houses so we use the same earth and we have created 250,000 bricks. We call this a symbiotic recycling model. Flushing your toilet, you are contributing to the growth of a papaya. You are contributing to the growth of flowers. One of the greatest management gurus says that the greatest management challenge of the 21st century is managing oneself. Many corporate heads are having seminars and retreats here, and they also see alternative ways by which they could focus their own corporations and feel a real sense of responsibility to humanity. The thing I'm most compelled to do when I get home is really a seva. It's service. It gets us out of being so self-absorbed. I always had too much, and now I want to have a simple life, like here. I love simple life, and my goal is to make a simple life in my, in my home. And if we just refocus our energies with these values, we could transform the world. It's truly a miraculous, magical place on this planet.